It's Wednesday night, and that means it's time for the Lamar Thomas Show, featuring the greatest receiver in the history of college football. Just ask them. Lamar Thomas. I was born in uh, Ocala, Florida. I moved to Gainesville to go to high school. Been recruited probably since the ninth grade, illegally, I might add, by the University of Florida. I, I still can remember Coach Solinger, Don Solinger, coming out to our practice one day. Here it is, this guy comes out in the University of Miami jacket, and, and I, I said, I can't believe that's Miami out here. And, you know, I wanted to go up and say, hey, I'm Lamar Thomas. And, and actually, I, I did walk up to him and I said, hey, Coach, uh, I'm Lamar Thomas. And he said, I know. And that was the start of my uh, relationship with the uh, University of Miami. come down here, you'll be on TV every weekend dominating. I thought about it. I said, man, where do I sign? My mom, uh, on Saturday mornings, I would wake up and she'd be holding my hand. I thought she was the weirdest lady in the world. <laughs> but she was holding my hands and she would be rubbing them and saying, one day these hands are gonna make you a lot of money. <laughs> um, she was smart. So now, here he is. The Great One, along with co-host Gary Furman of Kingsport.com, Lamar Thomas. There he is. Come on, man. Let's smile. Come on, baby. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Come on, man. We're still Kings, baby. We're still Kings. Let's go. Come on. All right, we're going to try to get your vibe, Lamar. We welcome everybody once again to the Lamar Thomas Show on a Wednesday night. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Canesport.com. He is LT, Lamar Thomas himself, the only Canes fan, I think, that's <laughs> happy on this Wednesday night uh, after two consecutive losses. And uh, it's gut check time for the Canes with uh, Clemson coming in to the Rock uh, this Saturday night. Lamar and uh, we looked, pulled out a stat this week. 12 of the last 17 Miami Hurricane football teams have lost three games in a row in a season. So this one is going to be trying hard on Saturday night not to become number 13. What do you think? Well, I, I believe this is a great chance to beat a Dabo Sweeney-led Clemson Tiger team. How about that? Uh, you know, hey, these last two weeks <laughs> got me sweating right now. But it's on to the next week, man. We're going to talk about this game and what happened. And uh, But you know what? Clemson is beatable. I do believe they are beatable. But that North Carolina game, well, once again, old, old Mac, I call him Mac Jones, but it's Mac Brown. <laughs> and I said it to a bunch of North Carolina guys, too, that were – I was giving them hell at halftime. We were all at the uh, Zach Thomas uh, induction into the Hall of Fame uh, ceremony at, at uh, Hard Rock. And Dwight Howard was there. Dwight, what's it? Dwight, whatever. It's Hollier, that's his name. He's one of my teammates. And uh, we got into it a little bit about who was going to win. And I was talking noise. 17 14. 17 14. And then all hell broke loose. And boy, he gave it to me on Sunday. Believe that. Just like right. every North Carolina fan that I know, they gave it to me, and it was uh, – I, I just don't know what happened. I mean, we, as you watch that game, and like Kelvin Harris said, number nine and May, and their offensive coordinator were the difference. I truly believe that. I agree. I agree. And we're going to – we'll break it down a little bit. We'll talk about all those elements of the game. The Lamar Thomas show tonight – 
is brought to you by Canesware. You, uh, you see the store behind me here on the screen. Canesware is your headquarters for all your Miami Hurricanes gear, the largest cane store that has ever been created. Stocked with merchandise. Do not abandon Canesware now that the Canes have lost two in a row. Uh, they got a lot of great stuff in their store for you. You can go by on your way to the Clemson game on Saturday. I hope everybody is still going to the Clemson game. This is a massive game for the we're Miami. We're wearing white. Program. We're wearing white, right? We'll I think it's a white, white baby. That's right. I think it's a, think it's a whiteout game. But uh, yeah, so the the, the Canesworth store is at 2655 South University Drive in Davie. You can go by there on your way. It's about 15 minutes from Hard Rock. And um, you also can shop them at canesware.com. Uh, tonight's show is also sponsored by the Florida Beach Bowl. Um, brand new bowl game coming to Drive Pink Stadium. Uh, started by a former Kane. Are we going to be able to name him tonight, Lamar? No. Well, give it one more week. Give it one. I think the yeah. checks are in the bank. In um, yes. For, for another week. Um, yeah. But that's uh, a great new bowl game that's going to be coming to Drive Pink Stadium in Fort Lauderdale in December. For historical black colleges. Uh, the show tonight's also sponsored by Williamson Cadillac, where Lamar Thomas buys all of his vehicles. Um, he walks in the front door, they light up, they know he's coming <laughs> with a purpose. He's got his wallet open and he is going to be buying some of the finest automobiles that you can find in South Florida over there at Williamson Cadillac. Uh, so support them, tell them Lamar sent you. Uh, you can even ask for Jermaine Chambers, even though he's not right. a city guy. Uh, say hello. Hey, Jermaine, enjoyed watching you as a cane. Help me get hooked up with a car, and he'll get you connected with the, just the right manager and sales guy uh, to take care of you. And then there's the law firm of Bratson and Vex Adomo. We'll be talking about them later tonight. But they are aggressive defense attorneys. If you get yourself in any kind of trouble and you need skilled criminal lawyers, uh, they will help you out. Uh, big time and we'll be talking more about them later in the show as well but right now Lamar we have got to talk about the Canes and um, yeah I mean you said people were were crediting North Carolina's offensive coordinator for winning the game um, I, I mean I didn't quite see it that way I mean I saw a hurry up offense unveiled uh, in the mid midway part of the second quarter. That mm -hmm. definitely was the deciding factor in the game. But I also saw the same hurry up offense, quite honestly, when I watched tape of North Carolina playing Syracuse the week before. And, um, you know, I'm not going to put you on the spot, you know, as a former coach and all, um, but I'll go out there, uh, you know, and I'll qualify it by saying, I love Lance Gidry. I love mm -hmm. his schemes. I love, I love the excitement he brings to the defensive side of the ball. Um, I think he dropped the ball, so to speak, a little bit last week by not having his defense prepared for North Carolina's hurry up, uh, turbo, uh, turbo, hurry up offense. They were going pretty quickly about 11 mm -hmm. seconds in between plays. But LT, I mean, they had to be ready for that. Then you can't, you can't allow a game that a, a conference game that is that big and that important get decided by the fact that you can't get lined up at the line of scrimmage, that you can't get play calls in, that you've got the, you, some of your best defensive backs busting coverages in key mm. moments, and worse than anything. You're frustrated, understandably frustrated. Understandably. Defensive coordinator, and I loved his passion, but he just can't be 20, 20, 25 yards out there on the field slamming his headset and yelling at referees, even if the timeout had already been called. It all added up to the to the turning point in that football game, Lamar, very costly for Miami. Well, I'll tell you this. Um, when you go fast, uh, I play – I. I was on the Louisville Cardinals coaching staff with Bobby Petrino, who was obviously the head coach, and Todd Grantham, who I call Dr. Blitz. The way you neutralize Dr. Blitz, yeah. you go fast because now he's guessing. You can't just call a blitz not knowing the, the you know what's going on. So you have to go basic. And when you go basic, it, it you know, it, it Gidry had been doing a great job with his blitzes and uh this uh doing different things, shaping that defense the way he wanted to, disguising things. But when they start going fast, 
you got to get that play in as fast as you can and let those guys kind of see the pitcher in front of them and play ball. If they're sitting back there having second thoughts, what do you think is going to happen? If the play is not getting in fast enough or, you know, you're not prepared for this, this stud of a wide receiver, number nine, Jesus Christ. Well, he was unbelievable. Uh, I mean, it, what do you say? What do you do? You what do you say? You guys running around out there, you know? Man, I, I I don't think I could ever do anything like that guy. Man, he's a special type of athlete. And I now I see why Matt Brown, again, I won't call him Jones because they won the game. Mr. Mac, Coach Mac, stood on the table for this kid. He fought so and hard to get him eligible. He fought so hard to get him eligible. I mean, he's a hell of a dynamic player that can change the game at any moment. And he showed Miami, all of us, who he was. Yeah, now, you know, kudos to North Carolina for going 5-0 and without him. Uh, or, well, I guess 4-0 and without him. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, he was a special talent. But, um, you know, uh, Lamar, uh, you know, obviously they, they needed to be better prepared for that. Uh, you know, obviously when you blitz the way Miami blitzes and you think about the first half of Texas A&M, the mm -hmm. first half of North Carolina, the success that they've had on defense with blitzing and, and the different schemes that Lance Gidry brings to the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The obvious adjustment to that is what you just said. Um, go mm -hmm. fast because that disrupts his ability to get his plays in and, mm -hmm. and makes it tougher. And, uh, you have to be prepared for that as, a, as the defensive coordinator. And you have to know that if you're successful in getting to the quarterback in the first, in the early stages of the game, which they were, that they're not just going to sit there and take the pounding for the whole mm -hmm. game when they got a, a, the guy that might be the one of, the, if not the number one pick in the NFL draft, he'll be probably in the top 10 in April um, at quarterback and, and just a phenomenal player. And you got number nine out there on the outside, and and you got a running back that's busting it up the way they do. They're not just going to sit there and take your pounding. They are going to figure out a way to counter it, and the way to counter mm -hmm. it was to go fast so that you can't, you don't have time in between the plays. As we say, you don't have time to dial it up. That's what we say. It up. Great to dial it up, dial it up, Lamar. Yeah. Why I come and do this show with you, man? You, you are you are you are a wordsmith, um, but very appropriate. He would they, dialing it up is, is, Dial it is up. it's a great way to put it. And um, man, just like that, boom! You had the lead at halftime, even though you had some mistakes, and maybe you should have been up by ten, maybe even more than maybe. 10, if you don't run on the field and smash your headsets down and you stop them on that fourth down that was coming up instead of giving them the first down. <laughs> got me sweating, Gary. Got me sweating. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things that could have happened differently there, but it could have been up by 10 or more. Um, and boom, just like that, man. You, you just snap a finger. That lead went away so quickly. 21 nothing in the third quarter. And that was about curtains at that point. I mean, they, they were valiant. They never quit. Tyler and Restrepo. God bless Restrepo. Man, we'll talk about him in a second. Mm -hmm. um, I mean... They, we got a few things to talk about Restrepo, but but um, he could barely walk coming off the field. He left everything out there, and they tried so hard in the fourth quarter, um, but it was just too much, man. It was too much, too much to ask. Uh, so, Lamar, let's unwrap a couple things real quick here. I was reading online, and there's been a lot of debate amongst the fans on the subject of Tyler Van Dyke. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've been watching Tyler Van Dyke. His grades are almost as good as any quarterback in the country. Mm -hmm. um, he's thrown was, for a what, – What was he? Was, he was uh, 31 and 49 in this game, but two interceptions. I, I, I believe that's correct. I'll have to find my stats. But, but um, yeah, I believe, I, I believe that is correct. Um, yeah, 30, 31 of 48, 391 yards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um Shannon Dawson said he had three bad plays out of 81 in the game. Uh, graded out great with pro football focus, as he has all year. One of the top rate graded quarterbacks in the country. I have been watching these first six games thinking Tyler Van Dyke's playing pretty well. I, that, that's that been my personal takeaway mm -hmm. from it. Decent. Well, decent. then I, um, Todd McShay, uh, <laughs> 
he he does a show. Um, let me see if I I'm, I'm I'm looking for it. Here it is. Um, he did a show this this afternoon with Ryan Russillo, uh, mm-hmm. on on cable, and the subject of Tyler Van Dyke came up, mm-hmm. and his review like was eye opening to me. He's like, this is what he said. He said, big arm moves. Okay. For such a big quarterback physically mm-hmm. looks the part can drive the ball as well as anyone in this class. And most classes make some throws where you're like, damn, this guy's got it. And there is a chance that he gets in the right system in the NFL and winds up being a better NFL player than he is a college player. Even mm-hmm. Justin Herbert wasn't as prolific at Oregon in this kind of system. Uh, this kind of team mentality as he has been with the Chargers. So there's hope for his future. But the thing I keep coming back to and see on tape, he's locking on the guys. He's leading there safeties. He's there leading safeties and the other DBs to his throws. And even with that strong of an arm, he's mm-hmm. giving guys too big of a jump. And he's not going through progressions as quickly as he there needs to go. do. All he's right. making one read. He knows where his primary target is. And he's just locking into that guy. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm like, wow. And then I started thinking about it, LT. Todd McShay is not wrong. Yeah, I was about to say, I was waiting to see if he mentioned progression, and he did. And that's, uh, you know, as you sit there and you watch the game, and I'm like looking, and, and especially at home, I get to sit right in zone, and I get to see the whole game, and I watch him lock on, and he's throwing there. He's never going here. And coming back over here. And if he does come over here, he's just throwing. It. And it's gotten him in trouble. You know, um, that one interception against Georgia Tech on the right side, if he if he looks to the right and comes back to the left, he got a touchdown over here to number four. The big old, big old joker matched up on the safety. I ran him by two, three yards, but he threw it over here in the interception. He has to run the guy down and push him out of bounds. Yeah, it's been pretty rough. So I mean. I'm reading some of the comments here. Yeah, he, I, my personal opinion, it's just my opinion, he definitely needs to come back another year unless he I, just I gets hell of fire, gets hell of fire, and just starts spanking butt, spanks Florida State's butt, and spanks everybody else's butt, then he can go on and do his thing. Hell, he can go to Alabama if he wanted to. Yeah. You know? Well, we'll be talking about that down the road. I know we will. I mean, and because there's going to be a, a lot of different layers to that. And then, um, and then the other thing is when he's when he's zeroing in on one receiver, it's usually Xavier Restrepo. Now you're a receiver. You've been a receiver's mm-hmm. coach. You're a receiver. Uh, can you look at a guy too much? I mean, Restrepo's putting up amazing numbers. Well. Let me look at my relationship with old Gino Toretta. <laughs> ah, you know, she's that's a tough one, man. You know, because once you get that relationship with that quarterback, and he knows that you're going to make plays for him. You know, the only thing Restrepo is really missing is that blazing, blazing speed. But he's a tough kid that makes plays and runs better than average routes. And he, he's, he comes back to the ball. He, he has grit. And he loves making plays. And, um, you know, if nobody else is doing that, keep throwing it to him. I mean, that's that's how it usually goes. You know, when the quarterback is dropping back and he feels that he if he knows where his guy is, he's going to put it out there for his guy. And Restrepo has shown that he has a, a, a bigger catch radius than some of those guys so far. You know, he's made plays some tough catches. Um you know, because that's what it's all about, giving your quarterback an, an option where everything shuts down and you come back to him because you know he's going to be open. Um, you know, so I, I don't mind it. I want to see those other guys get involved, obviously. But if the guy keeps doing what he's doing and, and the quarterback feels comfortable until they take it away, just keep humming it. To keep humming it to him. That's what I feel. And, you know, we're talking about all these things and breaking them down. We're talking about the number seven offense and total offense in the country. It's really quite amazing that you could, like, uh, dissect the quarterback to that level, and he's not mm-hmm. wrong in anything he said, but they're still number seven in the country. Kind of shows you the kind of potential they have. All right, let's bring in our voice of the fan, Mr. Bruce Warner, uh, onto the show. And uh, 
Bruce, a tough time to be a Canes fan, man. Two losses in a row. People ripping the quarterback. Um, your thoughts on all of the above? <laughs> all right. Well, you've touched on like five different things. But um, first of all, shut up, Kelvin Harris. I am doing the show tonight, no matter what you just <laughs> <laughs> Um Look. I don't disagree with what Todd McShay said. I've been screaming all season. Where is the dump down pad? Where is the check downs? Where are you know, the progressions? He's right. How many times have we seen guys open in the flat and he doesn't get the ball to them? If, if they're going to give you that, you got to take it. Now, I, I did want to ask Lamar this question. So they sped it up in the second half. Mm-hmm. And Gary's mm-hmm. sitting there saying they should have been prepared for it. Mm-hmm. Either one of you guys said, what would you do? What would you do? If you're if you were playing the defense, you were the defensive guy, and they start speeding it up. What could Gidry have done? I want I want to get educated because I don't that, know the answer. That, that, that's speed it up. That, you're screwed. Yeah. Well, that's a tough one because you know you got to be prepared. You got to have that prepared on on that game sheet. That okay on the defensive game sheet, they got to know that if they go fast, these are your go to blitzes that going to work. Or going to get there no matter what. But you can't leave yourself out on an island. You know what I mean? You can't leave the middle open. You can't do certain things. And and obviously our safeties have turned into ball hawks because they're chasing, they're jumping every freaking thing yep, and they're every. leaving the corners on islands. So I mean, it's 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 a tough one, man. It's almost like you have to understand how to play bend but don't break defense, and you have to play it and and cover. Everybody has to cover their zone and do their job. And if you do your job, it gives you an opportunity to slow them down a little bit. Maybe you have code words, code words for certain blitzes that, you know, you're saying one word and everybody knows, you know, what it is. I mean, you got to have something in place to where you can get your, you get your calls out on the field and you're not just getting torn apart. What has been proven, guys? But, but also, Gary, you can't substitute when they're going like that. So you're stuck. If you, they got don't substitute, you cannot it. substitute. Nope. Right. That, so that, that's another thing they should have been prepared. If you're not going to substitute, you got the wrong guys out there. Oh, and that's they took advantage of that. Yeah. That that is a big key yep. to some offenses. Um, I know when I was with, with Bobby, we would we keep you on that field. We hurry to the line. And keep you on the field. You can't sub, and then we we fake snap, fake, and then we then look to the sideline and get the play. But those guys are still out there. Yep, they're still they can't go anywhere. Right, because sometimes we just run a quick play, especially if you're trying to sub. So it's a chess game. It's a chess game. It's not checkers. It's a chess game, and you know they made a lot of the right calls and. Again, that freaking number nine, man. Jeez. Yeah, he's good. So let me ask you this: on the on the flip side, why don't we hurry it up? I'm watching the game, and I'm I was taking a nap in between snap. That's how long it takes. <laughs> and I, you know, and if we hit a pass and we, you know we do something good, they're still taking 45 minutes to an hour to call the next play. Why can't we do the same thing? Keep their defense on the field. We just didn't. Well, it's a it's a difference in philosophy. Well, seriously, why can't we do the same thing? Lamar, do you have to go fast to be successful on offense? No. No, you don't have to. It's just it's changing the pace. It's making the defensive coordinator pace. and the defensive players uncomfortable. Because, again, when you're used to blitzing, those cornerbacks especially, they it's a timing clock. They know from practice how long it's going to take for them to, to run this play. And now you have to actually really cover people because you're calling basic defenses. And so it – it's a little different. It is a little different. It just seems to me that in the last two games, we have not had a rhythm on offense at all. We scored mm. some points, but we had no rhythm whatsoever. We're in the A&M game. We got the ball, bang. We're moving it all over the place. We have no rhythm the last two games. That's why I said maybe you got to speed it up. Now, mm. if, if a Royal plays and he's actually healthy, he may be able to help because mm. he can get open underneath if they're playing two yep. deep safeties all the time. So they take away the deep ball. Okay, now you got another threat other than than um, Restrepo. Restrepo. So the tight end is significant in this offense, and we haven't had any this year. Holton, EJ Holton says our conditioning is the problem. 
that should never be in in Miami. Oh, uh, I don't think that's a problem. I don't. I, don't I, I, mean, hell, hell, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. If I went up to North Carolina on that Saturday night, I even my old behind could run all day. It's just a different atmosphere. So I don't think conditioning is it's an issue. It's just that the the game plan didn't warrant what happened, and he got beat. Yeah, but it's it's hard to it's hard to have trust when you see them come out in the second half and make adjustments. The same stuff we used to talk about with Randy and Golden mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Diaz and to send and Rick. No adjustments, no adjustments, no adjustments. Well, here we are with Mario Cristobal. And what happened? We got smoked in the second half. From what? They're all of a sudden they're much better than us. You know, so I think the coaching is important. I feel bad for these kids. They are busting their ass. You know, one thing that's been proven to me, at least, you know, is that Miami can't play base defense and be successful. Mm -hmm. um, if they're not blitzing and, and attacking and, and, and creating havoc on plays, they're not very mm -hmm. effective in base defense. And, and, you know, that's where the talent deficiencies absolutely are, correct are, Gary. are to show up especially those d tackles which i keep screaming about the three years we're doing this show we just don't have those guys leonard taylor has been a joke this year a yeah, joke terrible. i mean what is it like this guy they're calling him a potential first round draft pick before the season he played 38 mm. snaps the other night 38 snaps in a game that you're life or death trying to stay in the race in the acc your supposedly best defensive tackle, number one draft pick defensive tackle, played 38 reps. Um, mm. It's inexcusable. And you wouldn't have even known that he was on the field. I'm not sure about 38. I thought it was less. Like it might have been 35. might have been 35. I might be being a little generous. But it, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, like, this is supposed to be a superstar. This is supposed to be Warren Sapp. You know, I mean, that's that. I mean, that. yes, that's an exaggeration. I'll take that back. Um Another first round defensive tackle that's not Warren Sapp. Um, Will Ford. Huh? Will Ford. Yeah, Will Ford was different too. He was Ford is a whole nother level. Um, <laughs> not even Cortez. Lewis. You Lewis. can't say Cortez. He's a Hall of Famer. No, Maybe like Jimmy and Lewis. Dude, this is okay. Jimmy and Lewis. <laughs> right. I would have to say it like Jimmy Jones or something like that. You yeah, can't right. say yes. <laughs> any of the above, okay? He's not, not even, even as good as Jimmy Jones was. And Jimmy Jones <laughs> didn't start. He's not even close, okay? Right. I mean, we could have taken a safety CJ Richardson back in the day and put him at defensive tackle, <laughs> and he'd be making more of an impact right now than Leonard Taylor, who's supposed to be a number one draft Ooh. pick next April. I hate Man. to be so blunt, but, I mean, this is ridiculous, okay? This is the third straight year that we've watched this now. I love LT. He's a nice kid, right. gentle giant, you know, you know. The, but I don't understand LT, the football player, and how a guy with that much ability that people can see so much potential greatness in can produce so little for his team, for yeah. himself, uh, on the football field on Saturday afternoons. I, I wish there was some way, guys, to light a, a firecracker under him. I, I wish that I wish that Reuben Vane was in his body. Could you imagine like, how good right. Reuben Vane would you imagine perfect. how good that kid would be? Mm. <laughs> It's unfathomable. Yeah. Ruben Bain is a true freshman who's played six games, is right. making ten times the impact on the field on Saturday, right. and Leonard Taylor, who people think is supposed to be a first round draft pick. He better stay well, in school because he's gonna get he's gonna wind up being a free agent maybe. He ain't getting he better, drafted. He better he better turn it up. He better yeah. turn it up. Better turn it up. <laughs> Well, um, you know, we got so much, obviously, to talk about here. Um, but our first guest is, is is in the lobby right now, so I'm going to bring him into the fray here. He is C.J. Richardson. He was a ball-hawking safety for the Miami Hurricanes, and there is no way in hell that C.J. Richardson would have had number nine running through the secondary the way we saw the other night. Um, C.J., welcome to the Lamar Thomas Show. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah. CJ, how, how you doing, my teammate? How you doing, bro? Doing great. I can't complain, man. Living life. Loving life right now. Enjoy. It's great, it's great to see you, man. It's great to see you. A guy from Texas. I mean, you 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 end up being one of them guys that, um, let's see, Charles Farms, 
Uh, Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams, uh, Martin Patton, yep. uh, uh, John John. Uh, I mean, the list just keeps going. Uh, of course, Jesse. I mean, the list. All of a sudden, we got a run of Texas guys, man. Why Why UM? Why did you decide to make that track with those guys to UM? First of all, shoot, man, uh, I didn't visit any schools in Texas. I wanted to get out of Texas. Okay. My dad was so damn strict, I had to get away from him. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, I, LSU, Iowa, Nebraska, USC, Miami, those are my top five choices. And uh, Miami sells, sells itself. And I took five visits. I came to Miami and it, it, coming off of the National Championship year in 1989, uh, came on my visit. The camaraderie would, 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 get, would, would, would hit it off. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't about the wins and losses. That was great coming off of the National Championship. But the guys were so close. Mm. And I saw that on my visit. And uh, I met with Coach Harrison that, that Saturday morning. And uh, I had already committed to Nebraska. I told him I was on my way, I was going to be a okay. Kane. I was going to be a king. So, it, it, like I said, the camaraderie and the team working, man, and, and stood for one thing. We was going to win a national championship or argue people for a national championship every single year, year in and year out. Hey, CJ, let me ask you this. Now, you committed to Nebraska. So, you went to, what do you say, Nebraska, LSU, who else? Iowa, USC. Iowa, USC. Yeah. Okay. Four places that I know had poured money into their programs. When you got down there and you saw Building 36, what was your impression? <laughs> it wasn't impressive. It wasn't impressive. Like I said, the question you know, is that was were pretty impressed. 36 was, was not impressive at all. I mean, I, I went to other places. It was USC was beautiful. Mm -hmm. LS2, no, not, no, no, it was okay, but University of Miami 36 was terrible. But it was the guys inside that building that, that did it for me. Yeah. Wow. And you, know, you, you guys are still friends after all these years. It's 34 years ago. It's amazing. <laughs> Dylan said that's because we fought. We fought hard at Building 36, man. And yes, for those yeah. that don't understand, Building 36 was our our dorm, our right. football dorm. And everybody on campus knew that. Yes. They did. It was, yes. it was, it was, if you walk down our street. You probably got cat called if you're. I'm just, saying, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yes. And they don't don't have your girl come down there because she might get yelled at by somebody. But <laughs> CJ, so when you you had uh, let's see, Jesse was was Jesse already there? Jesse, K Dub, and Martin Patton was already in in Charles Charles Forbes. And so you felt at home with those guys. You know, it was you know we all from Dallas. With Jesse, myself, and K Dub, we all from Dallas. We, I played against those guys in high school, so I was here behind them. And uh, on our visit, I did feel at home. I did feel at home. They made it, you know, everybody made me feel at home. Not just those two guys, but it was it was everyone. It was everyone. And I mean, we had like, when I got there, there was four guys from Texas on the team. It was Jesse, KW, uh, Martin Patton, and Charles Holmes. And uh, on the visit, it was myself, Corn Francis, AC, oh, oh. And, Jonathan, uh, and Jonathan Harris. Y'all came in waves, man. We came in waves. We were ready to help with this program, man, win some national championship. And what we did, and to win national championship, guys, it takes guys from everywhere. Not just guys from Miami, not guys from just West Palm Beach. It took it took a, a guys from, from all around the United States who went on national championship. We, and we brought, you know, just just a little little different flavor than we don't that, that you know that to the team that, that, that we didn't have. You know, we was we were humble guys, we played hard. And we all played hard. We wanted to win. So we came on board and they joined in and we, we wanted to kick some people's ass. Yeah, yeah, you damn right about that. Now, CJ, I got to tell you, I got to tell this secret, man. And Kelvin Harris is on here somewhere typing all kind of crazy yeah, stuff. He right? in his mouth. But I can't, I can't even say the story I was going to tell because he doesn't mention names. So now, <laughs> Kelvin, you done took, took my story. I was going to keep the, the guy in the anonymity. But <laughs> this is when I realized that you – we're not to be played with. Somebody, we're not going to say names, took your money. Went through your stuff and took your money. And you were a young buck when I was there. They took your money. And I just remember you saying, oh, hell no, nah, this ain't going down like this. And you went and put a beat down on a, a guy that was older. And I said to myself, hmm, should I stop this? 
Nah. <laughs> and I said, I, he is not to be played with. You remember that? I remember that day. It was, it was, it was Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, my roommate, I, I, I started to get my roommate too, but I let him go because I ain't gonna miss it on name, but he let him in, he let him inside uh-huh. and uh, came in the room and, and, and took the money I've been saving to get home for to get for home six months. Oh. I didn't have a way home. I couldn't buy a plane ticket and I knew who did it. And, and I told him, guys, as soon as I see him, it don't matter. I'm 18, he's 21, he's about to get it. <laughs> Do, do you know you no, came around the corner? That, I was standing there. Sticky fingers was that sticky fingers? Yeah, yeah it was sticky. You know what it sticky fingers. Was sticky fingers. fingers. <laughs> uh, I can't. You came around that corner, and I said, "Oh Lord!" And boy, I, the beat down started. Boy, I said he is not to be played with. Another thing I do remember, you made some plays for us on special teams while I was there, and you you took a lot of pride in that, man. You took a lot of pride, like you know, we had a team full of guys that probably you guys were young, probably could have been starters at other programs, but you were on special teams and you were one of those guys that took a lot of pride in playing special teams. Lamar, let me say this real fast. I, I mean, I did take pride in that. And what's the statute of limitations on, on what we're talking about? Is it a limitation? I'm a lawyer. Don't worry it's about it. Okay? Okay. <laughs> so, you know, you remember the pot, right? So, Oh, yeah. I didn't play do I didn't play defense for two years, mm. but I won that pot ten times, at least yeah. ten times on special teams plays only for the hardest hit in the game. So yes, I, I took pride in it. I'm, I'm gonna put this on record, bro. I'm the best kickoff coverage guy in the University of Miami history. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, I believe that. I, I cold heartedly say that. And you even got hurt on the kickoff. And it was in the bowl game. game. You, you broke your arm. Yes. It was in Nebraska. National championship game. Yes. Yes. That, that's how dedicated you were to special teams. And I, I remember that. And I said, damn, man, I felt so bad. But you were like, shit, I made the tackle. <laughs> I did make the tackle. Didn't get a chance to celebrate with you guys. I was in the hospital the same night like, getting surgery the next morning. Well, the thing was, you jumped up. And then you fell back down. You were about to celebrate, but you realized your arm wasn't going nowhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember like it was yesterday. I said, damn, man, you all right? Hey, I made the tackle. <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> we got a 22-0. We got a national championship that night. 22-0. That is correct. Now, you know, you you being from Texas, let's say you went to Spruce. Yes. That's the great, greatest Spruce. Uh you know, you come to University of Miami, you play special teams, you come back from your surgery, and then, you know, of course, I leave, and all of a sudden, now you're, you're a starter, and you become a bowler. I'm talking about a true bowler. Uh, what, you know, after we left, after, after my class left, what was it like for you guys? You know, you had been kind of tutored by us a little bit, and what, what was that like? You know, you guys, y'all, y'all set a tone for us guys. I mean, for, for us young guys, and we, and we want to pay you guys back. You know, it's for one, you know, always win an orange bowl, mm-hmm. keep that going. Always compete for a national championship. And for, the second thing, play your ass off every Saturday. Keep it going and play your ass off every Saturday. And that's what matters to, matter to us, and that's what we did. That's what that that, that meant a lot to me. You guys set the tone. You, Spence, Cole. Uh, Gino, Leon, Daryl Williams, Hurley, Hurley Brown, set the, they set the stage for us guys, for the young guys. And, and, and we wanted to pay you guys back. They my playing our ass off every Saturday. Every Saturday, working our butts off during the week, intimidating guys, so we hit the field. And once the, once that horn went off, we was we was coming out with a W. Mm. Now, what happened to I- all that, CJ? Hey. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> well, things happen. Things happen. Hey, CJ, let me ask you this, because I know a lot of people want to know this. Did you get a chance to hit old LT in practice? Did you get a Did you get a chance? Because I say you chased me around Green Tree. I got Bobby Harden coming on later, and I'm sure everybody want to know. Did you get a chance to hit old LT? Skinny old LT? Lamar, I tried to hit you so many times, man, and you just tell me, man, sit your ass down. So stop, stop <laughs> going so hard in practice. Stop. You know, you don't know what I live naked, but everybody else, I got a shot at. Yeah, you punished a lot of people. And I, I, I it was a couple of times where Gino checked, and I looked at him like, mm-mm. 
<laughs> this practice, dog. We good. Mm-mm. I said he got. He won't. He he mad about something. Mm-mm. He 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 trying to make make a name for himself. He ain't gonna make it off me. But I, I, I tell that. you this: you you put you put some punishment down on that practice field, man. Appreciate and it. It, it was some guys out there that were like, we getting that huddle. Hey, man, you see CJ back there? He owns something today, dog. <laughs> It's only one way to practice, man. You play like you practice. That's the thing, man. That's, that's what I believe in. And, and let me tell you this story real fast. How I got discovered on special teams, I was – Derek Cryan was starting at kick on kickoff. Mm-hmm. The day before the game, Coach Eric said, who's this guy that's beating everybody down there? Coach Owen said, that's CJ. So Coach Eric said, he needs to be on the, on, on the first team on kickoff. That started my career right there on kickoff. Wow. Just like that. You- you the and Darren, game. Darren crying slow behind. He was good coming off that edge, but he wasn't making it down there. He had no business being on kickoff. Not in front no of business. Him. Them first <laughs> eight, them first 10 yards, he'd give it to you. But after that, uh-uh. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that, that that was um you look back on those days and you know, you you were all American. Um what what are some of your fond memories of being at UM? Man, just playing with one, playing with a bunch of guys, man, that had one common goal. One common goal was winning a national championship. I can count on one hand how many games I lost in five years. A lot of mm-hmm. people can't do that. I played for the national championship year in and year out. And, you know, we all, you know, we didn't hang out together, but we got on Green Tree or we went in the Orange Bowl with the visit people in, in, in that stadium. We had one common goal. That was come out with a victory. I mean, that's, 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 you know, I tell people all the time, I don't, you know, all these guys, I don't, I don't know, I don't keep up with, but if you were somebody at University of Miami, we know who you are. And I, and I love University of Miami for that, for that, man. I mean, coming from little, little, little town in Pleasant Grove, going 1,600 miles away to University of Miami taught me a lot. But the one thing I always tell people, man, about the University of Miami, I met a bunch of group, a good group of guys, man, that had one come and go. I come and go was to win the last championship and kick everybody's ass on Saturday. <laughs> and that's what we did. Yep. How much uh, Miami football have you watched this year, uh, CJ? I, 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 after the Georgia Tech game, I'm done watching. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. But, you know, I watched that game and, you know, I had a bet on the game. People sent me their money and I thought they had one looked up and shit. I had to send the money back plus mine. <laughs> Oh, shit, I mean, I'm tired. Okay. You had the reverse Venmo? I didn't even know they had that. They got that, the Reverse Venmo and cash app. I thought I had one. I mean, I, I, I finished watching the game. She got a L. But this- hey, let me let me ask you this, CJ. You being now a head coach at, at your high school, right? Yes. How are you? How, how, now, I'm probably sure some of your coaches probably – Brought it up. Did any of your players say, dang, Cole, what happened? I'm, Lamar's still hearing about that today. I talked to the kid, asked me today, well, Coach, what's two weeks in a row? <laughs> two weeks? I mean, hey, I tell the kids, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. All I have to talk about when I was there. What we going, got going on right now, I, I have no clue. So, but, you know, I, I, you know I, I'm still I'm a U fan. I'm yeah. still I'll always be a U fan, but we got to get it together. Hey, hey, just so you know, when I coach high school, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Kids say, "Hey, coach, man, what happened to Miami, man?" Line, get on the line. <laughs> get on the line. <laughs> I, go. I, I don't want to discuss it. You get away with it in high school. You can't get away with it in college. <laughs> run they bus off. No, exactly. run they bus off out there. Don't ask me about Miami. Exactly. I wish that, you know, we just knew a little bit more about why that happened. I mean, I got to believe that there was a reason why, you know, Mario chose not to need the ball. I mean, as flawed as it might have been, I mean, we want to fight to the last whistle. We want every rep count, you know, whatever that would be. I wish there was a reason. I mean, I I can't believe that he just had brain lock. I mean, you you being a head coach, DJ. I'm blaming my assistants. I got I got 10 assistants. Somebody talked to me on the headphones and hey coach, it's time to need a ball. So yep. it's not just Mario, it's everybody on the sideline that take, you know, take blame for that. It's mm-hmm. not just, you know, I'm not, you know, 
he's part of it. He's the, he's, he's the head guy. But I, if I had 10 assists, I'm getting on that Saturday morning. I'm watching film. I'm talking, hey, guys, I'm into the game. Somebody got to tell me what the timeout is, how much time we have left, and if we can get out with, with me and the ball. So You got that good. chart? You got that chart? You keep that chart? Somebody got the chart upstairs? Everybody got the chart. When you go for one, go for two, when you take a knee, all that. All that's in play. Yeah, so, but that was in his that's inexcusable, CJ. The whole, it is. the whole sequence, right? Even after they they got the ball, we had what two plays they scored on the yes. last play. They should have called timeout before their last play. Miami should have and set the defense. Nobody goes up. Everybody stays back by the goal line. Let him catch it underneath. But there was nobody there. This kid, and he got in the end zone and just left just this past week. The last I mean, behind the receiver. Who's the receiver? No, that's all, that's, all, that's all I say, number nine. Where, where was the over-the-top help? CJ, you played back there. Where was the safety help for for um, Jaden Davis? I mean, he bit on uh, he bit on something. I, I, I don't understand. How do you go 75 yards in three plays? And for the game. So yeah. for the game, now, you know, with us, I mean, it's time to, to drop them. Somebody going to make a play. Somebody should look somebody yeah. in the eye. We gonna get off the field. Coach made hey, a mistake. Hey CJ, I got a I got a good question for you because we ha- we talked about this earlier. Okay, you're a defensive core. You're a defensive guy. You've been a defensive coordinator. Okay, how do you a hurry up offense? You can't blitz. I mean, you gotta you gotta have the perfect call for it to work when they're going fast. Because you know, I try to explain it. Tell us about a hurry up offense, how you defense it. You gotta keep the ball in front of you, I believe. Keep the ball in front of you. Keep the ball in front of you. Make the tackle, solid tackles. Slow getting up, but you make the tackle. Keep the ball in front of you. That's the whole thing. Slow them down, make the tackle, get up slowly, line back up. You can't get confused and blitzing and you know what I mean? I mean, I don't think you should blitz. Because I mean, I don't think you should blitz. Keep the ball in front of you. But blitzing is what was making them effective in the first half, CJ. I mean, they, they they were controlling the game with the plays they were making on defense. Once they went hurry up, they they couldn't get the calls in. They couldn't get lined up. And it totally negated all of the great blitz schemes that Lance Gidry, the defensive coordinator, brings to the table. So first of all, if, if you don't line up, you can't play. <laughs> yeah. So I'd rather line up and, and, and give us something I know we're solid in mm-hmm. versus – Somebody getting out of their lane blitzing. So, like I said, we stay solid. Keep it, keep the ball in front of. We gonna line up best athletes against best athletes, and we we used to win it when it comes down to that. Mm. Yeah, but look what happened last week, LT against Tech on that last hail mary pass that he threw for a touchdown. Didn't we lost contain? Remember the DN lost contain on that one? I think it was Jafar I Harvey. And well, that's not discipline. What? That's not discipline right there. There's no way that's supposed to happen. Especially okay, on the Hail Mary. You you force the guy, the quarterback, you force him to his offhand. You don't force him to his strength. You right. don't let him go to his strength. You 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 line up three guys on that side to force him to throw left. Go left because it's hard for him to throw back across his body. Yep. But he went to his strength. Yeah. Right. He just and he ran right past him. He just oh. wound up and threw down the field touchdown. May, Nobody may they came. So is may that, they came. Is that discipline or is that poor coaching? What what is that? He, you can't do that. We, that's, that's you know I mean we got we got to talk about the players also you know you got to talk about the players that's 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 lack of discipline and, and, you know somebody got somebody on the defense got to look each other in the eyes and believe somebody gonna make a play yeah you know, and, and that's what it's about you you got that you in your helmet that's what it's about it's pride mm-hmm. it's pride you know I mean, coach made coach made a mistake but somebody gonna get us out of this and that's what it's about and knowing knowing what's going on on the field. Knowing, exactly. like you, you're not going to chase that quarterback. All you're trying to do is keep him behind in that pocket, yep. and hopefully that one guy that's coming up the middle or that other end is going to converge on. Him. Exactly. Because you exactly. said I wasn't going to run the ball. You didn't have any time. No. So he had to get rid of the ball. They had no time out. But no I think Mayday Kane is, is saying y'all rehashing this Georgia Tech game is giving me PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> Take a pill. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, make, it's making me sweat over here. Hey, <laughs> that was hey, a sad so, Saturday. 
that was that was that was, hey at least you ain't have to walk out the stadium and go home i mean that was i thought yeah. about pulling off i think if, I, if we beat georgia tech i think we beat north carolina mm. i, I like think we that. on the, we, we undefeated going to play florida state wow yeah you could be right yeah now now you you also played for um dennis yes in seattle yes sir what, what was that coach coach e in the pros was he what, how was he different you know, Coach, he always been laid back. So, yeah. you know, we, we had about 10 Miami guys on the team. And, you know, people, you know, it was already a lot of chat on the team about yeah. guys in Miami. You know, Coach Erickson let that bottom. We had Coach Arnold was there. Uh, Coach Erickson. Coach Smith. Was was it Smith? Coach Smith. Yeah. Coach Smith. Coach, you know, Coach Erickson always been laid back. So, it was, it was – but he did make us work. So, we had – you know, he released me one year. Mm -hmm. Came back and made the team the next year. So hey, it wasn't it wasn't that easy. It right, right, right. Easy. So I was in Seattle two and a half years. But like I said, Coach Eric was he's always been a great guy to play, play for. And uh he was easy to play for in, in Seattle. We had about 10 guys in, in Seattle. It was it was easy. Hey CJ, I didn't know this, and I, I was looking at your Wikipedia. I didn't know you came to UN to play baseball. I, I did. I was drafted in the seventh round by the Pittsburgh Pirates in center field and, and uh, came to University of Miami to play baseball. Coach Erickson brought me in that office and told me, hey, if you ever want to compete for a safety job here, you better tell a coach out there you're not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> so I took him out. I came out to center field, went straight out that outfield, and went and put my helmet on him. <laughs> Who was the coach, Fraser, at the time? Yes, sir. Hey, yes, remember sir. that little hole in the wall, that little hole in yes. the field? Took that, oh. took, took my baseball glove and, and put my helmet on, went right back to playing safe. <laughs> <laughs> so you drafted in, in seventh seventh round? Yes, sir. Wow, man, that's you know I didn't even know that, man. I I didn't. I was sitting there. I was I was amazed at the fact that you know that you playing baseball i mean I had no it was baseball was easy than football to me i was you know mm. i was fast i played center field i could hit the fast ball i mean just wasn't no damn fans in the stand it wasn't exciting <laughs> so i rather you know on like friday night I, now i regret it now right i regret it now after i broke my arm three times <laughs> <laughs> playing playing football i regret it but you know hey it was, you know i was I was a good baseball player. I was very good. Could hit the fastball, I could steal bases, and, and go get the ball in the outfield. Yeah, but look at look at look at the friends you made on the football team for life. That's unforgettable. And I don't know what would have happened with the baseball team, but the football team, you have a whole different life because of it. But you know the you know the football team ran the campus. I don't I don't even remember the baseball guys' name or basketball players. So the campus was was the football guys. So uh, you know, I, I wouldn't pass it up for the world. I mean, I met a lot of good friends, mm -hmm. you know, best friends. I still talk to today. A lot of great teammates, a lot of good coaches. But, you know, one thing you never pass up is camaraderie we have at University of Miami. This fraternity of his own. And uh, it's a lovely place to play palm trees. And the thing about it is, wish we had the orange bowl back, but we don't mm -hmm. have it. But it's a great place to play. Yeah. You know, you, it's funny. You said you were drafted in the seventh round to play baseball, but you were drafted in the seventh round also to play for the Houston Oilers. You're right. <laughs> You're right. You're right. You what right. made you pick football? Why did you pick football over baseball? It was more exciting. I mean, that was the fans. Were, I mean, the stands were crowded. People calling your name. Baseball games with two or three people in the stands. No, you know, nobody came to the game. Eating I sunflower mean, seeds. Exactly. It was boring, <laughs> but it was easy for me, but it, it was right. boring. It was right. boring. But, you know, uh, uh, football, you know, I, I, sometimes you know, I played the game, so, I mean, I, I, was, I was a physical player. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I went late in the draft because I, I was hurt. You know, I, right. my last game of the season against the brass, that was the roughest game I ever played in. I think I had like 18 tackles, mm -hmm. sprained both my AC joints and my shoulder, tackling uh, – Schlesinger, Lawrence Schlesinger. Phillips. Mm -hmm. I mean, eight. The offense didn't get a first down the whole second half. We stayed on the we stayed on the field the whole second half. And going into the draft, I mean, I couldn't lift, couldn't run, had to get an MRI. I mean, I was a physical guy. 
and I, I don't I don't take anything from it. I mean, I'm, I couldn't I can't change. I'm not gonna change the way I played. And, but it cost me some years in the NFL. But hey, it's it's, it's okay. Hey CJ, how's your um how's your team doing this year? Right now we're five and three, Lamar. It's, it's, it's you know we're five in school. You know, we got small numbers. It's, you know, only reason I'm, I'm hoping none of my kids are watching, but I'm I'm there because it's, it's my old it's my alma mater. And, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, it's it's I didn't I, my I didn't get my due diligence there 23 years, and it's, it's time for me to go somewhere else. But you know, it's it's, it's Texas football. A lot of times we have a crowd. You know, it's Texas football is big in Texas, but mm -hmm. this is like I said, it's a small school. I have a few athletes, no D1 athletes, bunch of D2 kids, NAIA NAI kids, but we we always win some games because we have some great, I have some great coaches. Good, good. Well, man, we definitely appreciate you coming on, man. I I know you know you taking time from from your coaching. I know you putting in hours because I know you used to put in a lot of hours when you played, but. We definitely appreciate you, man. It's good to see you, man. Let us know after the season if you're going to come down, man. We'd love to see you down here. I'll be down. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate it, Lamar. Good seeing you, CJ. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good night. Well, CJ yeah, Richardson. I, I know all about sticky fingers because I'm the one that got him eligible to play in that Cotton Bowl game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I had to go down and see your athletic director. Let's, let's not bring up his name now. I didn't say his name. But old sweet nasty did. Yeah. Yeah, that All right, was, guys, that before was, we um, – Harder story than that, but <laughs> – Yeah. Right, LT? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the, um, before we move forward here, let's uh, take a few moments here to take care of some business, LT. Uh, let's start by showing everybody the new Caneswear. Welcome, Welcome to, to Caneswear. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. Man, that store looks good at night, doesn't it? Man, it looks great. Every, it looks awesome. Every time I drive by there at night, I'm like, man, that is one of the nicest like lit up facades I've ever seen. It lights up uh, the whole parking lot. It really does. You cannot yeah. miss Canesware if you're driving down University Drive at night. And um, guys, Canesware is the largest cane store that's ever been created anywhere. There's You can get anything you need there. T-shirts, jerseys, polos, hoodies, hats, flags, decals, magnets. Uh, no matter how many Everything. members of your family that you have, they have sizes for men. Women, kids, babies, they'll even dress up your pet. How about that, Lamar? <laughs> yeah, there and, uh, oh, let's give a shout out to Ken. He's, he's having, you know, he's having some issues with his dog. Seventeen years, seventeen years old. It might be the last couple of days for him. So shout out to Ken, man. Yeah, no, that's, Love that's those doggies. Ken's the manager of Canesware. Yeah. Um, if you go in there, you're, you'll, you'll probably meet him. Um, but, you know, you saw in the commercial, they have gear for the Dolphins, the Panthers, Inter-Miami. Eventually, Adidas will let them have messy jerseys. They, they don't, I don't Eventually. Think they have Eventually. <laughs> Eventually, after, you know, everybody else gets their, their dibs on them. I mean, amazing. <laughs> Probably the hottest memorabilia item uh, in the country right now is a messy Inter-Miami jersey. Uh, but they have other Inter-Miami shirts there uh, as well. And, um it's never uh, a good enough time to go to Caneswear and uh, knock yourself up on Canes gear. It's more than a store. It is an experience. And in that new expanded location that they have at 2655 South University Drive in Davie, like I said, you can get anything that you need. So go check out Caneswear. You can go there on the way to Hard Rock on Saturday. Uh, if you're not able to, you can always shop 24-7, 365 at Caneswear.com. Uh, Caneswear mm -hmm. is your number one spot for Miami Hurricanes Our gear. LT's wearing. Is that like a turtleneck? What is? What kind of neck is that? No, it's, a, it's a hoodie? Oh, I love that. That's great. I love that. Great. I'm going there to get that. I don't know if I can go tomorrow because I'm picking up Caesar from the airport, but I'll, I'll get down there. I love that shirt. Very nice. We also... We also got to say a few words about another one of our sponsors, the Florida Beach Bowl LT. Um, right. 
talk to us. Tell, tell us a little bit about this new bowl game that's going to be coming to Drive Pink Stadium in Fort Lauderdale in December. South Florida, are you ready for the highly anticipated Florida Beach Bowl scheduled for December 13th, 2023 at 7.30 at Drive Pink Stadium in the city of Fort Lauderdale. This is an inaugural event, features showcases the of historically black colleges and or universities, HBCUs from the CIAC and the CIAA football programs. That's the SIAC and the CIAA football programs, battling it out on the sun-drenched shores of South Florida. This bowl game is all about uniting and showcasing Broward County as a whole. In addition to the main event, the Florida Beach Bowl is hosting a golf tournament, which I'll be at, a 5K run, a community concert, and various, various special events, all designed to engage and uplift our community. For more information, visit www.floridabeachbowl.com. What is the Bridges at Spring Tree Golf Club? I've been playing golf down here my whole life, LT. I never heard of the Bridges at Spring Tree. What is that? I don't know. We're going to find University, out. University, yeah. University and, and Oakland Park Boulevard. It's back there. Oh, okay. Back there. I think I passed it. And I, I see Lorenzo White. He went to Dillard, didn't he, Gary? Yes. He yes. White. Michigan yeah. State. Michigan State. Dillard. Yeah, Dillard. All right. And um, let's also talk about the law firm of Rotson and uh, Faxodomo. Uh, LP, you, you never want to need them, no. but if you need them, they're a good place to go. That's right. It's perhaps the most stressful and disconcerting event that can occur in a person's life. You're suddenly facing a criminal prosecution. So many fears and questions arise, whether you've been arrested for driving under the influence or indicted in federal court. Few of us are ever prepared for anxiety and serious potential repercussions that accompany criminal charges. Although many criminal offenses carry very real and potential for jail time, even less serious crimes can and have long lasting consequences, such as loss of jobs, immigration consequences, felony conventions. At the law firm of Ratson and Faxodomo, they are a result oriented defensive defense firm with a focus on specialized client attention. Mickey and Jewel are both well respected, experienced, and aggressive criminal defense lawyers with a reputation for devoting 100% of their skills and talents to each and every case. And their goal is to handle your criminal matter effectively and quickly so that you'll put your ordeal behind you and move on with your life. The lawyers pride themselves in understanding your case that is troubling you and putting your family at ease. Now, they've also been known, uh, what, what, in 2017, they got both of them, were 2014 Florida super lawyers for their skill and experience and dedication and aggressively pursuing the best possible outcomes for their clients. Let's just hope that Kelvin wrote those numbers down. <laughs> what's the guy? What's the guy's name, Lamar? Bachidomo. Yeah. Uh, what's his first name? Jude. 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 And, and, Jude. and Mickey's Mickey's the lady. Mickey Mickey Ratson is the lady. She so, she so started the law firm. She's the lead partner in the firm. Yes. Interesting. Yes. I, yes. I'll tell you, man. I, I I don't know how many how she loses many cases. I mean, <laughs> that's a that's a that's a tough looking uh, criminal defense lawyer there, man. Um, if I He's ever get in trouble, dog. that's who I want to talk <laughs> to my jury. <laughs> She's a bulldog. <laughs> Love her to death, man. Love her to death. Yeah, and we can't forget about uh, Williamson Cadillac, where LT yeah. goes to buy uh, all his vehicles. Uh, Williamson, Williamson took care of you, huh? Oh, yeah. Mr. Williamson, man, he's been around a long time. You know, a lot of coaches lease their cars or whatever they do from, from down there. Uh, Jermaine Chambers is working down there. He's a, a former wide receiver uh, from the University of Miami. He's now – he moved from car salesman to in the finance department – it's like a family deal down there. They, it's all about UM for those guys. So if you go down there, you know, you mentioned something about UM, they, they, they'll perk up because, you know, they're all about getting the best products. I mean, we bought two cars from them. 
Um, my wife recently bought her work car and they they've always done as well. So go on down there and check them out. It's way down there in Kendall. Well, let's see. Get past Dayland on US one before you get to the old Fud Ruckers. <laughs> <laughs> the old Fud Ruckers. <laughs> hey, you know Betty, Betty Amos finance. Jermaine's into finance. That's who uh, you really need to talk to. That's who you need. Over. You need to know the, the finance guy. You make that's sure right. you that this show right. a little T to Jermaine. That's the guy you really got to know. That's right. All right, guys. So the Canes, they've lost two in a row. And uh, like I said, 12 out of the last 17 Miami teams have lost three in a row. This one obviously does not want to join the list. You got Clemson on the schedule Saturday. Um, LT, is it good to have an opponent of this level up next, or is it bad? With a bye week. I, with a bye week, LT. With a bye week. I think it's good. And let me tell you why. This is not the same Clemson that we've seen the last couple That's of years. That's true. Okay? So, as our good friend Kelvin Harris says, <laughs> well, he's been saying this since day one, Clemson's beatable. Okay? They are beatable. And I, I know Dabo, I know, I know Dabo a long time, and I was at a coaching convention, and he was up speaking, and we were sitting in the front row because that's what Coach Petrino made us do to opposing coaches. And he was about to start his speech, and he looked. He said, Lamar Thomas? And I was like, he was like, man, what's up, man? How you doing, man? I ain't seen you since the Sugar Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was with so he, he was He was with Bama. He was a walk-on receiver at Bama at the time. Uh, but he's done a great job at, at Clemson. But they're not the same Clemson. You know, they've, they've had a rough year as far as they, they can't. They can't move. They can't stop. So, you know, they're beatable. But we have to be consistent. As some of the viewers uh, have commented, we're just not consistent enough on offense, defense, special teams. Yep. You no, know, we got to be consistent. Not easy. Win. Not easy when you're not all these young freshmen. There are so many young kids on this team. It's hard to be consistent. Well, that's the thing. We're when you play injury free this year, but we're so young, and we have twelve or twelve DBs. How many of them are really that good? Well, you know, I can tell you this about I can tell you this about playing young kids. You know, you bring in these these highly recruited freshmen or whatever. You at some point they hit a wall, and they're not going to. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, they're freshmen. Their high school season has been over just a year before that. You know, so they hit a wall. And so when you play these young guys, you got to understand that sometimes they're going to show up, but it's going to be sometimes they're not going to show up. So, you know, that's that's when everybody talks about, you know, you're recruiting all these top freshmen and you got to play them. Well, if you play too many of them, you just don't know who's going to be on and who's going to be off. I mean, that's just part of being a fresh as a coach. We always, you know, you said, that OK, well, how much should we play him this week? You know? He's a freshman. We don't let's see how he does in practice. Let's see if he, you know, feeling himself. Let's see if he's doing well. Let's see if he's missing home. Let's see if he's missing his girlfriend. These are things that a lot of people don't take into account. You know, thousands you know, of miles. We have two five stars on the defensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. We've already spoken about one, and neither one of them has lived anywhere close to what they thought they were going to be. Uh, that's not great. That's just not good, and you can't have that. They're they're not freshmen either. This mm -hmm. is what their third year for both of these guys. I, I don't I don't see much out of them, and we're counting them on them, and it's not happening. Uh, yeah, a lot definitely. of the guys we brought in from the portal, they're helping us. Right. Some of them, some of them, well, but some of those guys are older, you know, and that's players. that's what that's what happens. You know, you got an older, more seasoned veteran guys. Um, they 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 know what it's about. They know, they know, you know, their girlfriend that's a thousand miles away, they probably broke up. Yep. So now they got a girlfriend at, on campus now. You know, they're not having to make the phone call. Well, I was about to say having to go to the payphone and stay on the payphone all night, but, you know, they're <laughs> 36 to pay for them. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, these are you things know, that people don't else, even think about. You know what else, though? Last year, we didn't keep, we didn't get to see Citizen. We played 18 games. He hasn't played one. That hurt. Now we have Fletcher, another highly recruited running back. He's not playing. He's I, he might be out for a while. I don't know. 
And, and that doesn't help either. And then Arroyo is out most of last year. And so far, all of this year, except for six snaps last week. Those are three guys that can take it to the house, that can create mismatches and problems. So what we have right now is young kids, Ray Ray, we have Riley Williams, we have young kids. Look at on the offensive line. Who's making the most holding penalties? I would know, a kid. But I love the direction of the team. I don't care what yeah. anybody says. We're way better than we were last year. And mm -hmm. when you've got the team and then you've got the staff, if you expect us to go 10 and 2, which I foolishly said 9 and 3, 10 and 2, you know what? That's expecting way too much. You know, but and then the flip side is what the hell happened in the last minute no. of Georgia Tech? That hurt. Maybe that it's hurt not, me. though, Bruce. I mean, you know, when I look at this team and we do a lot of analysis obviously at Kane Sport and people will you know make fun of me a little bit but when I'm evaluating this team I'm evaluating it as a five and one football team right now mm, I, I know they lost, the Georgia, they lost the Georgia Tech game by some fluky nonsense and mm -hmm. I get it but I'm thinking big picture and I'm saying this is really a five and one team right now so if you could beat Clemson on Saturday and then you got Virginia and NC State, you take care of business in those games. Now you're going it to Florida State with momentum and you're going to be mm -hmm. an underdog, a size, probably a sizable underdog going up to Tallahassee. But this season starts to take on a whole different texture if they mm -hmm. can do that. So this is yeah, a big game. I, I, I understand Saturday. what you're saying, but that that loss dropped us to four and two now instead of five and one. And we need as many wins as possible, especially if it was a gimme like that one, because we want to we want to get these recruits not saying, oh Craig, who the hell wants to go to Miami? The guy can't even coach. He can't even take a knee. You don't want that. So maybe we're no. talking amongst ourselves, but the rest of the kids and the rest of the nation looked at it like here we go again. So yeah, Clem if we beat Clemson, right. that means we've beaten Clemson and Texas A&M, and we lost to North Carolina. We expected to maybe lose four games to these but, guys plus FSU. So don't lose but it. If you can win Saturday, if you can win Saturday, yes. you could go to Tallahassee seven and two. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, you, you can, the, but you're also you've been saying to me for the last four or five years, don't look ahead. So you know, no, I'm not looking ahead. Ahead. No, 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 I'm not looking ahead, but I do see a path back from this abyss that yeah. they're in right now. Of course. I agree. We play like we did against A&M, even though we gave up those two touchdowns that were cheapos, we busted their ass up. We really beat them badly. The other day, we, we didn't do that. Now, what's to stop Clemson from playing up-tempo? They probably will. So I would, see how I, would, we I, would, this. I would think that right now, down there, they're preparing for something similar to that. Now, I can tell you this. I, I can tell you this about Clemson. And Kevin Harris brought it up, and I forgot about it, but it is true. The, one of the reasons why Clemson is not as good as they've been. No, yeah, NIL, that is one reason. But they definitely were the best signal stealers of all time. Really? Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. It was incredible to play them. Like, either they were the best guessers. Or, I mean, I've never seen a team shift all the way to one side when you call a pick to the right. What? How did they do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, they were great at it. And that was their defensive coordinator who's now head coach at OU. Uh, I think that uh, Brent Venables was really good at what he was able to do. Yeah, he um, was. And they, they were they – were, at that time, they were on the tops of their game. I think that Venables not being there has kind of hurt them a little bit, um, and they've kind of gone down. That's why I'm. That's why I'm saying I, I'm expecting Miami to go and play well. This is a this is a Clemson team that is beatful. It's not it's they, Clemson. They do not have great wide receivers. Like correct. That. Correct. They don't. Correct. You know, they don't have. Right. Right. Speak, they don't have speaking a of wide receivers, we would be remiss if we didn't give a shout out to the wide receiver room guys mm -hmm. um yes. we saw brashard smith step up last week uh we saw josh horton uh step up last week nice uh in, in in a big time way that is the one position on this team where top to bottom guys are stepping out and busting out and really showing individual development um mm -hmm. lt uh KB is, is is doing a nice job with those kids. He really is. Um, I mean, 
those guys are playing well. Um, they're making plays. Uh, you know, we, we talked earlier about Restrepo, and 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 I read some of the comments where got where people were saying, "Hey, don't." You know, the, the other defensive coordinator knows that you're going to try to force it to Restrepo. Yeah, okay. So now it'll be time for those other guys to step up, you know, and that's what we need. We need guys to step up. I think we – the the one guy that trans, – I want to see the one guy that transferred from Louisville that's supposed to be really, really fast. Uh, Harrell, he's not getting uh, a lot yeah. of he's not, he's not getting open, though. They're covering him. No. And they're covering with his safety over the top. So you well, got to get if, the ball if, maybe if, in the well, well, here's the thing. If you're if you're taking a safety over the top to cover him, that means you fill that zone with another guy coming across. He'll be yeah, wide okay. open. But where's but he's still throwing the ball to Tyrell Harrell. He did it the other day in the corner of the end zone. He's like you said, he's not looking over the entire field. Mm. That's and that's that's a big knock on him. And 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 his check down is constantly Restrepo. Mm. And Restrepo has the great ability to find holes in the defense or the seams. And you know what else I've seen this year for the first time in a long time? Guys are wide open. They're wide open. They're not like that guys draped all over them. They're open a lot of the times. So even, you know, um, you got to give them shout out. They're playing really, really well. A couple of drops by Young, but other than that, and they're making those, the catch radius. Some of these guys are making, look at the play that, that George did the other day. He was even with the guy running into the end zone. All of a sudden, he, he blurs right by him like a blur, and he catches it for a touchdown, the one in the left corner of the end zone. That was a hell of a play. A, a guy like Tyler Harrell kind of reminds me of Horace Copeland with his speed. You know, he pushes everything down the field. Yeah, you say, I see that he, he tried to catch it with his face. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know what? The, the point is, when you throw that ball down the field like that, it changes the whole complexity of your defense. If they know that you're going to take that shot, they got to, they have to, like you said, they have to bring that safety over the head. They have to. And, and what that does is open up a, a void in there. And, and if you're able to. Why those crossing routes for a guy like Arroyo would just, yeah. could, we could be Clemson with crossing routes. We really can. Yeah. You know what I liked a lot? I think it was Josh Horton that made the fourth down play. If I'm if I'm wrong, I apologize. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm going on memory here. But there was Horton. a fourth down play. Josh Horton came across the field and made a great adjustment in his route and gave TVD a lane to get him the ball. And they made the first down. And that was a huge play in the game. What I loved is they rewarded him. He yep. played almost the entire rest of the game. Um, one of our viewers here was noticing that. Um, that he got more snaps going down, uh, going down the stretch, and, and he did. And, and I like that they rewarded, yeah. they rewarded him for yeah. making that play and gave him extra playing time. Brashard Smith made a great catch over the middle. He had a stretch. Um, he's a smaller guy; he doesn't really have a, a, a huge radius. Made the best catch of his career. They rewarded him. He got more playing time down the stretch, and I and and I like that, LT. I think that means a lot to the overall football team. It does. I mean, that you're giving guys an opportunity to make plays now. And also, I think as a coaching staff, you now you, you're, you're saying, OK, I can trust this guy. You know, it, it makes a play. I can trust this guy. So now if in substitution, you're not saying, oh, damn, I didn't got my I don't have my guy in there. You're saying, OK, we're good. We're good. We're good. Because I know coaching with a head coach that's way more. Um, I want to say meaner. <laughs> then Mario Cristobal, what the is he doing in there? What is he doing in there? <laughs> oh, it's Jesus. You know, that, that they'll get on you about that. So, you know, when you have that type of depth and that type of guys that can go in and out and you don't lose a beat and actually get better, that's what it's all about. That's how you win championships. If you can build your team in every position like that, where the guy behind you is begging to get in there and once he goes in that guy that was in the first part of it is like hold on i got to go back in because hell i might not get my position back and that's what it was in the day i'd like to see chris johnson in the flat you know mm. get it all out in the flat and let him take off because he, he who's going to stay with him he's that good especially if they're playing two deep safeties get the yep. ball out to him you know <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we got our second guest in the lobby right now oh, good. and uh, getting ready to come in. And I don't know if it's virtual or what, but I'm sitting here looking at what's going on there. 
and I see a pretty darn nice house in the background. Um, <laughs> and I see it. And I see Looks a like piano, LT's wall. And I see, a, I see a piano in the background. I don't remember Bobby Harden ever playing the piano, but uh, Bobby, welcome to the Lamar no. Thomas show. What's up, Bobby? Thank How you, you doing, man? Thank you, Gary. I think I saw What's you up, last LT? time. Hey, Bruce. How you doing, Bruce? Days, Good. Nice house is right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> How you doing, Bobby? Yeah. You doing it, okay? It's virtual. Trust me. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm doing well, uh, Mr. Thomas. How are you? Well, well, <laughs> Can't you tell I'm, from I'm this background? Great. Come on, man. Hey, man. I, I don't think I've ever heard you call me Mr. Thomas. I want to jump into something, okay? You chased me. Like, I, I got to tell you, I was a I, I loved you as 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 a teammate, but on that practice field, man, and we just had CJ on earlier. You want? I was a young pup. Y'all took it out on me, man. Good. Y'all, 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 <laughs> man, y'all, boy, y'all, y'all did some things to me, man, and y'all, y'all really, y'all, y'all grew me, but y'all, you made it hard for me. Why? Why is all? Why? Why'd you do me like that, man? Why? Why? I got. I have three words for you. Steel sharpens steel. I like All it. All right. So we knew where you where we needed you to be. So we had to be rough on you so you could handle anything that was coming out. And that's the way we practiced, right? We challenged each other so much that we were just ready for anything that came to us. So uh it was great competition. Uh we loved it. And, and it was it was it rarely went to that level of I'm going to fight this guy after practice, right? You might fight on the field, right? But once you went back in the locker room, that was it, right? So we knew the level of competition that we wanted to play at, and we knew that was going to uh, we were going to get better at practice. That's it, you know? So, yeah, we did put it on you guys. Yeah, well, I had to go against the number one defense in the country as a freshman on scout team, and it was not fun at all. I, I tell you, I learned a lot. You know, I was – I wanted to send your ass back to Piper, you know what I mean? Because you 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 was doing too much out there, and you know I'm like, man, this ain't even the game, bro. This this ain't even the game, man. I mean, bro, I mean, so you you coming you coming from Piper High School? Who who else went there? Didn't Benny go there? And Mike was there at first too, right? Yeah, yeah. Michael was there. Yeah. So were y'all good in high school? Uh, uh, Quadrant. Uh no, no, we were not we were not a very good team in high school. I can say that. Poor we, coach. We weren't poor. blue holes. We weren't we weren't playing for state championships. That's poor yeah, coaching, we, man. We, we, um, you yeah, it was generally uh, you know, we had very good athletes, mm -hmm. but we only had a few excellent athletes you know what i mean mm -hmm. so we had we had a decent team guys that were hard workers played hard mm -hmm. but we only really had those those few that were those d1 prospects mm -hmm. uh but um you know like i said lt we um we we pride ourselves on being from this little school that a lot of people know about for some inf infamous reasons now but <laughs> we were just kind of Going and chugging along where, you know, here's Brian in 83, here's Benny in 84, here's me coming in 85. And then you had uh, Albert Cano come out of there uh, that a lot of people may or may not know about. You had uh, Quadrant Hill who played at the U. Right. So mm -hmm. we had a bunch of guys that came came out of the, the, the school, but we weren't the, the Boyd Anderson, the Dillards, the St. Thomas, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the bigger schools, like, you know, even the Heritages now. So. Uh, we just worked hard, man, and, and and just tried to get it done. So, so, yep. so because Brian went to the University of Miami, and Benny went to the University of Miami, why you? Why did you decide to go to the University of Miami? Uh well, here's here's a good story. All right, so my first choice was Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, I just loved Atlanta. It was just a great city mm -hmm. to be in, right? But the coach left got a new job so i was like okay i'm looking bobby, for a new team now went down to go ahead i thought that was bobby ross but he was he was before that right who was who was before who was the coach yeah i uh i think it was bobby ross who came in was back man i, I think was bobby ross was working. 
but go ahead. Uh, okay, so you, you talking what? Thirty eight years ago, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but so I I decided I was going to stay in Florida at that time because my top mm -hmm. three schools were Florida State, Miami, and Georgia Tech, right? And not in any particular order for those Canes fans out there. So uh, go to Florida State, man. And and I kind of respect John Eason uh, for, for giving me the information that he gave. But it, it really made me make a, a decision. He straight out told me that there was another safety that they were recruiting. And that if he didn't sign, they would sign me. Mm. And I thought about it. And I said, wait a minute. So I'm second choice right now. Okay. Right, right. So I go to Miami, me and Bernard Clark go on our recruiting visit together. And uh, I went in to meet with Jimmy and Jimmy just, he asked me, how'd you like the campus? I'm like, coach is cool. You know, I'm, I'm all, I'm close to home. I like it. My mom can watch me play, you mm -hmm. know, all my friends and family will see me. And he says, uh, well, would you like to play football for the university of Miami? And after that incident at Florida state, I said, well, I need to know that you, want me to play football at the University of Miami. And he said, we'd love to have you here. I said, I'm a hurricane. And that was it. So you got, sometimes you just got to go where you want it. <laughs> or, 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 or this is true too, Bobby. A lot of guys went to the Miami and they, they talked to Jimmy and Jimmy said, okay, you coming to Miami. And they said, no, we got to take other visits. And he said, well, you know what he said, if you take another visit, you ain't coming to Miami. And, and I know a lot of guys are told go. that too. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. And that oh, was my yeah. last visit. So yeah, that was that was great. Yeah. 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 So I, 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 remember, I didn't even have I, any more visits to have. <laughs> I, I remember this about you, Bobby. Two things. I remember you blocking a punt against Wisconsin. It was my first road trip. And the thing that I remember <laughs> the most about that block punt, nobody else rushed. <laughs> Except you. Nope. And you brought the damn I had, punt. I, I had the green light. I had the green light. I said, Coach and I was hey, if you can get there, get there. I was a freshman. My first road trip, I'm like, that's a bad dude right there. Was that the 51-3 to three game? 51-3, to three, yes. Yeah. But yeah. actually, it was three to nothing. No, that was up there. What, yeah, that was up there. there, right? That was at, at Wisconsin. Three, we beat them here. We beat them in Miami. 51. Game, I think. Well, we beat we beat them. My first game, first road trip up there, fifty-one to three. Right. We actually were down three to nothing. You blocked the punt. We end up getting another field goal, make it three-three. But hey, man, I, I was like, that dude was a bad because it was my first road trip. So I'm watching everything. I get to see a jumbotron. I'm like, a jumbotron, because you know we didn't have one at the Orange Bowl, and I that was my first game dressing. So I'm staring at the jumbotron. And the second thing I remember, I don't remember if it was. One of these games, but at the Orange Bowl, I I saw you with two ice packs on your shoulders, and I said to myself, "That's a dude that's a that wants it and will do anything to win." I just remember you sitting in that locker room with them two ice packs. I'm like, "God damn, he, he got beat up today." Well, he beat somebody yeah. else up or something. Yeah, that's what I remember yeah. about you, man. Well. Oh, oh, absolutely, hey, LT. Um, that's what we so, had hard nosed players, and that's Bobby. We did. I and, and you know, I modeled myself after the guys before me, the Bennies, the, the Benny Blaze, the, the Selwyn Browns, the mm -hmm. Daryl Fullingtons, mm -hmm. uh, who else was it? Uh the Tobert Baines, all those guys, and, and especially if they played safety, right? I wanted to get on the field. Uh, right. you know, Bernard Clark and myself, we were the only two freshmen that traveled our red shirt freshman year. Uh, because we wanted to be on the field, so mm. um, I have I have bad shoulders now because of playing football. Uh, nerve damage. I don't know if you guys remember that in the Michigan State game up there mm -hmm. had that nerve damage, and it's it's still not a hundred percent. So, uh, and then I had a, a a similar injury or a rotator cuff and labrum <laughs> injury in my uh, left shoulder. So, you know, I'm a little beat up from football, but I wouldn't trade it for the world, guys. Wouldn't trade it for the yep. world. You know, yeah, how much Miami football you've been watching this season? <laughs> Gary, it's hard to watch, man. <laughs> I my, my I feel my heart beating out of my chest. I'm yelling at the television. I mean, I'm like, okay, I'm about to rip this TV off the wall right now. <laughs> uh it is it is so frustrating yep. uh to watch, but 
you know, die hard. I still, you know, kind of gut myself through it. Um, but uh, the, after that Georgia Tech loss, uh, I, I, I can honestly say I didn't even watch the North Carolina game because I, I was hey. like, man, I'm going to be disappointed again. It was yep. hard. It was hard to watch Georgia Tech's loss, man. That was that one kind of broke me a little bit. So, well, yeah. you know, back to back weeks, the safeties have been very pivotal, p- pivotal factors in the latest in the, in winning and losing. And uh, they're getting mm-hmm. caught in their snap decisions that they have to make. They're making the wrong ones. They're, they're biting on, on into the backfield. in front of them and letting guys get behind them for touchdowns. Right. And stuff. What talk a little bit about that as a safety, a guy that played safety and, and, and having to make those decisions mm-hmm. at the snap of a finger live in a game. Okay, well, I, you know, again, I think I, I saw a comment. Someone s- stated that some of the guys are playing selfish. They're they're looking mm. to they're looking to make the big play instead of waiting for that big play to come to them, right? Yeah. So if we need yes, to break out true. the Webster's dictionary to realize what the word safety means, you are the last line of defense. So two mm-hmm. things you have to be as a safety: you have to be disciplined and you have to be a sure tackler or mm. there's going to be a lot of big plays. So mm. uh, I would say to these guys, just hold hold your water, right? If you read the quarterback, he's going to tell you where it's going. Keep everything in front of you, especially nowadays. The field's so spread out, man. You got to be really disciplined and staying and keeping your depth. You know, you don't want to be 15, 20, 30 yards back. You want to be, you know, anywhere from 12 to maybe, you know, 12 to 15 and be slow in your back pedal. But just reading – the defense. I mean, uh, reading the offense mm-hmm. and knowing what releases the safe uh, the re- receivers have. If he's got an inside release, it's probably not running another ins- outside route. If he does, mm-hmm. you still got the sideline to help you. So just cover the middle of the field, and and you got to stay disciplined and stay deep. So yeah, that's just hard. Because you didn't watch the game, I think what we're also talking about is. Um, the receiver from North Carolina already had two touchdowns in the game, and he had single coverage with Jaden Davis on him. And he, he it looked like he ran a post or something like that, Lamar. And he beat Jaden Davis by a step or two, but there was no safety help. Mm-hmm. Oops, neither one of them was near the play. And a lot of our guys were right. going for kill shots. And, you know, that's a great play f- for the audience, but it's not helping the team. Why weren't these guys? Oh, you didn't right. watch the game, but why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they be there? This guy's fast as lightning. Yeah. Uh, again, I, like I said, it's discipline, and it's just knowing that you got to be a sure tackler. The, the 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 kill shots are gonna come, and you got to be ready when it comes. Right. I played mostly strong safety, so I was right around the line of scrimmage, more right. you know, more five to eight yards from the ball. But I did play some free safety. Uh, with the Dolphins, and you just have to be disciplined. You have to mm-hmm. be, and you cannot take chances when you are the last person before a touchdown. You can't. Like on the last play against Georgia Tech, you know yeah. what? 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 Good. You have to tell yourself. I'm, I'm thinking. I never. I mean, I played safety in high school, and but not on the level that you did. But I would just tell myself, "Hey, man, I can't let none get behind me on the last play, and I'm gonna knock everything down." You know, you can't – Right. I mean, the guy's 30 yards – how many – 50 yards away, I should be able to react to that ball, you know, and our safety came up, and the other guy went back to the left, to the right, and he was wide open. Yeah. I mean, that that's mm-hmm. that's a bad deal. Right. right. Hey, Bobby, let me ask you about something else. Yeah, uh, yeah you didn't want – It is a bad deal. Um, let me ask you about go something ahead, else. You didn't watch, you didn't watch the game, but hurry up offense was a big factor in the North Carolina game. Uh, North Carolina, Miami defense was handing it to them pretty good in the first quarter and a half of the game. And then they went to more of a hurry up attack. They were running a play every 10, 11 seconds, and they took the defense totally out of their game. They were struggling to get the play calls in. The secondary was confused and they hit several big plays. Um, Talk about that as a defensive back when 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 uh, an offense coordinator starts speeding things up like that, um, and what that means, you know, to to the safeties. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'll, I'll ask you guys this: 
and, and then I'll get into it. So what do you think you do when there's when that hurry up is happening? You got to be able to play what? Base, right? Base. Base. You got to be able to play your base defense. You yeah. got to be able to play your base defense. That's your bread and butter. To Hurry to up. Play it. To and play it. <laughs> to and play it. Run with the to scenes. That's it. it. You got to you got to be able your your base defense should be hey, if we get in a jam, to and play it. Whatever it is, you everybody just take your reads. And again, I don't know these schemes that they're running offenses are way different than when we were playing. We we freaked out when we saw the four wide coming in with the one back, but we got used to it, and mm-hmm. we realized if we we had enough speed, and I think we have enough speed on defense now that we should be able to line up in a base cover two, and cover people. That's mm-hmm. it. Either that or two man. All I'm doing is running yeah. with this guy up the field, so nobody's running free. That's mm-hmm. it. I think our front seven is great, uh, and they have the potential to be even better than they are right now. We we do get some good pass rush at times. Uh, I think our linebacker play is pretty good from what I've seen. So if you can get to that point where you play your base defense, you know, you're going to take some things away. Now, what if you're not any good in your base defense? <laughs> which, is, which, which is the way which is the way I see it right now. I see, I see a defense. You're answering the question, Gary. <laughs> I see a defense that is great when the defense coordinator is scheming it up and they're blitzing guys from the corner and they're safety blitzing cool. and they're hitting the quarterback. When they're doing all that exotic stuff, man, they look awfully good. But when they got to sit back and base, which is the adjustment that North Carolina made, in the game that, that when you go watch the condensed game online here after the show, because we're perking up your curiosity here, you're going to, you're, you're yes, going to, you <laughs> you're going to see that we were doing some damn good things in the first half when Lance Gidry was dialing it all up. But when they went hurry up in the later stages of the second quarter, and then in the second half, and they had to play that base defense once they were able to get lined up in it, if which they was did. Which if they did, which was a struggle for a little bit, they weren't real good in that in that base defense, Bobby. They gave up. They they got outscored twenty one nothing very quickly. Yeah, yeah, and and that's that, that to me again. That's a that's a practice thing. If you're not practicing against that every week, you you know, hey, if the if it's the scout team, if it's the ones versus the ones, hey, let's give these guys a good look at just snapping this ball every ten seconds, so mm-hmm. you get in the practice. Yeah. So. Right. And you feel there should not be any confusion on the field. Uh, mm-hmm. I say is I was always prepared on the field because of the way we practice, period. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And LT will uh, will definitely uh, attest to that. Yes. Yes, I will. Oh, I, so I, I expect Clemson to come out right away with a hurry up. Why should they wait to the second half? Just come out. Let's see what the adjustments we made. I would do yep. that if I'm Dabo Sweeney. Wouldn't you? LT, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, no yeah. doubt. Hey, I hey, hey, Bobby, I, I got I got some I got something I want to talk to you about. And <clears throat> <laughs> he remembered he just remembered something else, Bobby, that you did when you were in school. Hey Bobby, you know, speaking of old Benny Blaze, man, I, you I'm good. You know, you and you you and Benny were so tight that Benny Blaze used to let you use you his vehicle. <laughs> and I'm talking about all these nice vehicles. So Bobby would give me rides sometimes. I'm talking about BMW, Jeeps, all kind of cars. I mean, Bobby was Mercedes, rolling the car. Yeah, yeah. Mercedes. And he would say, come yeah. on, man. He would drive yeah. me up to Fort Lauderdale to my aunt and uncle's house. And we would take that drive. And he would all, I mean, just like a big brother, always say, hey, man, how you doing? You miss home, da da da. I mean, just like, and I'm like, man, this dude really like me. Like, he really care about me. You know, I, I, like, you would just, hey, man, come on, I'm going up for a lot of you. Co-. And I was just like, all right, bro. I mean, that's the type of guy I remember you as. Like, you always just cared about your teammates. You know, there are a couple guys, mm, but you were always a guy that no one had a bad word to talk about because you always were a stand up guy, man. You know, and, you know, your mother, she did a, a, a hell of a job raising you, brother. You know what I mean? I, I and, and the reason why I'm saying that because you you like took me under your wing, man. 
And I appreciate that. I don't know if I've ever said thank you enough, but I definitely appreciate everything you did for me as a young eyed, uh, very impressionable kid from uh, <laughs> from North Florida. I mean, you know how wide my eyes were in my nose. So I was like, oh, oh man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. No, I I, hey, LT, I tell you what, man, I appreciate the compliment as well um, about, you know, the person I was in college. Um, I, I guess, you know, I, I can and I don't guess this. I can thank my mother for a lot of the mm -hmm. things and a lot of the way I am today. Uh, she raised me, you know, respect others. You'll get that same respect back. Uh, I carry that into my workplace right now. You know, I, I watch people come in and they're grumpy and I have my days. You know, but mm -hmm. I try not to show it ex, uh, uh, outward. You know, if I'm walking from my desk to the restroom or to the break room or even to go downstairs and get lunch, I'm speaking to everyone. I try to keep a smile on my face because you never know when you're not going to be here. And and I would rather have people talking about me the way you just did than the opposite of that. So I appreciate you, too. And for anyone from the NCAA listening <laughs> yes, I was borrowing Benny's Mercedes and BMW, and I was putting, I was paying for all the maintenance, <laughs> hey, and the gas, and I, the oil changes, and everything. <laughs> hey, I remember we got in an accident. <laughs> remember that? Yes, that that was what that was in the Jeep. That was in the Jeep. Yes, in yeah. the Jeep. We got yeah. an accident. And I and I was totally at fault. And it's so funny because I work in insurance now. So I see these people making these left turns all the time thinking <laughs> I can beat that car. I can beat that car. And I got T-boned because I thought I could beat a car. <laughs> so that was crazy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, Bobby, man, I was glad my partner wasn't hurt. You know, yeah. he really is a great guy. I don't know him that well, but when I go to the practice, I, I saw him this spring, the week before the spring game, I walk up. He acts like he's known me for 40 years. I mean, I do know him for a long time, but still, he's just a great person, period. Get the football player part. You know, and I asked him, hey, you know, let's, I got his number. We're going to put him on a, a different show, but he's just a great person. And, and, and you should be proud of yourself, man. You really should be. Everybody talks I about that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. On thanks, that. thanks, Bruce. I appreciate that, and uh, I will pass that long uh, that that message along to Miss Mrs. Bo uh, Bobby Harden. She's B O B Y. She's B O B Y. By the way, so, accidents yeah. where someone was trying to make a left on was that my ex-wife because she did that. Five times. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Uh, well, if it was, she t-boned me because I was at fault. <laughs> so, well, that was and, and guess and guess so. what? Guess what, Bruce? Your ex-wife, if that was her, she was in the hood. So I don't know. If she... <laughs> That's yeah. why she's your ex. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bobby, man, we definitely appreciate you coming on, man. Much love to you, man. And what, what, you gonna come to one of the games? I mean, I know you're out there in Texas. When, when you coming down here again? Uh, I should be back down in uh, Fort Lauderdale area uh, sometime in December. Uh, so I'm gonna definitely try to catch a game. Uh, you know, I don't know. I know people probably uh, sound think I sound crazy when I say I'm a huge Dallas Cowboy fan, but I grew up that way. I was 11 years old, found the Dallas Cowboys. So uh, they play the Dolphins uh, Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. So Christmas hopefully the, the Hurricanes will have a game around there. Uh, really maybe I don't know. Game. Maybe they'll be preparing for a bowl game. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So you know something like that. I definitely want to get back down, but uh, if I can get to see you, all you guys, when I'm down there, I'll definitely uh, get get in touch with uh, Lamar and uh, come and see you guys. All right, and I appreciate uh, yeah, you having it, me it, on. It is on LT. Much love, much love, Bobby. I'll see you at the cigar bar, baby. <laughs> Absolutely, baby. Absolutely. It's all Thanks, about the Bob, you, baby. Bob. All about the you. All right. Thank Take care, Bobby. Be well. This is a great person. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So let's take this thing home. And uh, LT, how do they get this done Saturday? How do they bounce back from those seven days of disappointment? Consistency. Consistency. Somewhere. And phys physicality. Well, they you know. More physical. Okay, I'll take. I'll put that one in there too. Consistency and being physical. Um, you know, obviously turnovers, penalties can't have those. You got to be consistent. And if Clemson is going to come out and say, we're going to go no huddle, just like what both of these two safeties said 
just go base. And I'm going to tell you something, as an offensive coach, I would rather call three players and hit a home run. The hardest thing, Bobby Petrino said, the hardest thing for most offensive coaches to understand, just take what they give you. Right. If they're giving you a hitch, you just take it. And But most offensive coordinators want to change up and go for the big play at some point. And what and if you can cause them to call more plays, you make more tackles, you get a chance on stripping the ball, tip ball, anything like that by keeping people in front of you. And That's just how being everybody was in the game at the end. Everybody knows their job. Again, it goes back to do your job. Right. Yeah. Well, on both sides of the ball. On both sides of the ball. And, and, and you know what? Maybe Gidry's got this in his head because when he was last year, the last couple of years, he's just flying it all over the field. Maybe it's not so easy for him to tone it down a little bit. I know he's I'm, I'm telling you, I'll give you like my my theory and, and it showed to me in the North Carolina game when they have to play base, they are not good. Right, and, not and, good. And, and that's my question. That would, that would be my question about this. Con and I get the concept of you just automatically go to base defense because you don't have to call it. Everybody right. knows what, with, that you're in base and that's what you got to do. But if you're in base with, with, with a defense that doesn't have defensive tackles that are playing at any level whatsoever represent, representative at, at all, that whose best defensive end is on the sideline, and you got a true freshman having to go uh, seventy-eight out of eighty snaps. Mm. Um, he might have been tired, um, and nobody else is really stepping up a defensive end. Uh, you got one linebacker that you can count on uh, somewhat. Your cornerbacks aren't covering particularly well in tandem, and your safeties are making really bad decisions and costing mm. you ball games. LP, like, yeah, we, we're going to automatic to base, but if I'm the offensive coordinator for North Carolina last week and now the offensive coordinator for Clemson this week and I make you go to base, you're, I got you, man. I got you. And isn't that, there a, isn't is, there a that's way they can blitz? the problem they're facing right now, in my opinion. Why, but why can't they blitz? I understand what you're saying. But there's got some sort of a signal they have to have a for this blitz package or this. Yeah, but, yeah, but the problem is <clears throat> the problem is unless you can pinpoint when they because if they go fast, let's say they run a play, they're two wide receiver sets, okay, two by two, and then you call a blitz and then they go to three wide receivers to one side, you're kind of screwed. Like you have to basically be zeroed in on that blitz has to work against everything for you to call it. Or less, unless you're going to get home. And if you don't get home, somebody's running free. And it's well, hard so to have, have to that pay. as an automatic, right, Lamar? I mean, yeah. without knowing what formation they're in, what the, what you know, it's, it's hard to have it as an automatic. You can't, you can't you just call what your formation is until they come out of the huddle. <laughs> but okay, you come out of the huddle, you you There's call no it, but ain't no, no huddle. It's just I, I, they run a the, the the play every ten seconds. Bro, if you're playing a base. You pretty much know that you're gonna lose. That's a, that's I don't say lose. Way I see it. I don't it's, think they could now with this level of per, of individual performance that they're getting out there. I mean, this defense is having success when Lance Gidry's dialing it up. Yeah, they're not having success when it's mano a mano. Right. <laughs> Right. I mean, they ran right down our throats. That kid oh, ran right man. down their throats. Oh. They were they, they were pushing the pile every play. Yeah. Nobody was making a tackle. Everybody was throwing shoulders, making shoulder tackles. I mean, I'm not trying to be too hard, but right. I mean, that's what I watched up there in Chapel Hill Saturday. Like, was, I, I couldn't was, believe my eyes. Two man. different games. Two different games. I they couldn't believe what I was watching. Could not believe it. You know? So I felt so good at halftime. <laughs> I didn't feel that great. I thought we should have had a bigger lead. I, I just we felt that we were winning. I felt great that we were winning. I thought that uh, I I knew we left some points out there, but I felt like 17 14, we were going to go in. And because of last week, the week before at Georgia Tech, I said, okay, you learn from the week before. Let's not get out physical, outplayed, and out coached in the second half. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I think we kind of let the game slip away a little bit, even though it's not technically true. At the end of the second quarter, when they scored that touchdown, that really got me thinking, uh oh, you know what? We're not we're not gonna hold this lead. 
And they actually almost scored again. But it was 17-14 because we got the field goal. But still, we should have been a 14-7, yep. maybe 17-7 going into the second half because they got the ball. And they scored at the end, and they scored at the beginning of the second half. And that that's the beginning of the downfall. They switched their offensive schemes, and they can't, couldn't stop it. You know? All right. Well, hopefully we see better on, on Saturday. Bruce, uh, you, got, you got any closing thoughts? Just win, baby. Just <laughs> win. Great. That's all I give a damn about now. I don't care who does it. Um, I don't care. I don't care if he throws five picks, but we still win. I don't care. I just want to win. We okay, the Raiders. I think I'll see you in the uh, in the skybox on on Saturday. Yes, sir. I'll see you there. We bringing big C's, huh? Big, big C's, C's coming. He's coming to my house tomorrow. I'm sure I'm taking him to get food. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, Coach Erickson is here, so I'll hit you up and we'll we'll see if we can link up. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you, All buddy. Right. All right. Bruce. Be well. Yeah. Stay safe, everybody. All right, LT, let's do some word association here. Mm -hmm. Let's start with Clemson. Mm. Not the same Clemson, that uh, a beatable Clemson, I'm thinking. Um, you know, Dabo Sweeney's, he's been doing this thing for a long time, but I think they're a little bit behind the eight ball because of his uh, not wanting to, to uh, get guys this NIL money. So I, I think that they don't have the – the skill guys that they probably should have had, which is kind of weird because my opinion, you mean to tell me that guys haven't been getting paid at Clemson? Hmm. Well, now it's catching up with everybody. And guys are saying, Hey man, I need more money. And he said, nah, I'm not, we're not getting into that. And uh, that's why I don't think they're the saints. I don't think they have as good a skill guys as they've had in the past. Uh, so I think this is a beatable Clemson team. I really do believe that. All right, let's so then let's uh, transition to Dabo Swinney. Dabo uh, again. Uh, he's a good coach, man. He's a he's a good coach. A little different. But he's a good coach, and I, I tell you this: he's a he's a genuine guy too. He I told that story earlier about the coaching convention, and he also I said, "Hey, Dabo, man." Let me get let me see your drill tape. And he said, Yeah, I'll get it to you. So I called up there. I said, He ain't gonna give me the drill tape. The guy says, Hey, <clears throat> he usually doesn't give this out, but he told me to make sure I send it to you. I have wow. Clemson's drill tape, and it is amazing. You know, th these are things as a young coach, I'm well, old but young coach, um, that I, I cherish because you know, you take a bunch of these coaches and you take what made them successful. You know, here's a guy that went from wide receiver coach to head coach, made him successful. And But by watching that drill tape, you see why he was able to become a head coach because it was it, it's very amazing to watch that tape. Uh, there's some really good players on there, and I, I think the world of him, but I'm hoping he loses on Saturday. <laughs> Tyler Van Dyke, Lamar. TVD. Come on, man. You know, we need consistency out of it. I mean, you've been playing – you know, you look at his numbers, they're pretty okay. You know, they're pretty they're, – they're good. But we need a, a complete game where, you know, no forced interceptions, um, you know, where you're actually taking that snap and you're going through your progression. I see where some people are saying, hey, don't get locked in on one guy. I, I get it. But you got to understand, you know, that guy has been in safety net and, you know, hey, if he's not in there – he has to throw to somebody else. So he has to develop some trust in those other guys. And, you know, hopefully in practice, that's what's going on. Um, you know, obviously Restrepo, I think, is a little banged up. So, hey, why not give those other guys a chance during practice? And uh, so you can get that, that type of chemistry that you have with Restrepo. But he needs to have a big game against this Clemson defense. And we'll see. You know, he, he was having a – he wasn't moving around great. At the beginning of the week, so we'll see. We'll see how that. We'll see how that hey, comes along here. Hey, well, maybe we might get to see the backup. You never know. Ooh, I've been waiting to see this guy, so we'll see. Yeah, Emory Williams. If he has to play, he'll be ready. But he's still a true freshman. Um, all right, and let's finish it off with Mario Cristobal. So my man, man Mario, I still believe. Okay, he and the reason why I believe. I'm a little biased. 
And, you know, he set out on this journey to come back here. You know, obviously he took the job. He got paid very handsomely. But I really believe that it 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 hurts him to not be successful. And so that's why I truly believe in him because I know that he feels the same way I feel. And I think at some point it's going to, it's going to happen. Okay. I think last year, everybody jumped on board because it was the, the Manny Diaz to Mario thing. Okay. Didn't happen the way we had some bad games, middle Tennessee this year, we had the Georgia tech game. It's a work in progress guys, you know, but who else would we have in here? A guy that doesn't care that's going to take this job, do it for a couple years to move on. No, this guy's going to be here and he wants to be here and he wants this program just like we all do, especially us alumni guys. We want this program to succeed. So I believe in him and I'm a ride or die with him. You know, even though I, I can't get in the building, it's all good, but I'll continue to do my show and uh, I'll still praise him. <laughs> I never say never, LP. You know, you, you never say never. Um, all right, we want to thank our uh, our guests tonight, uh, CJ Richardson and Bobby Harden. Um, got to thank our sponsors once again, Canesware, 2655 South University Drive in Davie, canesware.com. Uh, give them a look. They've got the most hurricane merchandise that's ever been assembled under one roof. We got to thank the Florida Beach Bowl, which is coming to Drive Pink Stadium in December. A game started by a former Kane, who we will hopefully be able to reveal one of these weeks in the law firm of Ratson and Faxadomo, where clients can get aggressive representation from skilled criminal lawyers. If you ever need them, they'll be there. You don't want to need them, but sometimes things happen and you want to know that you got bulldogs representing you and um, they, they absolutely will help you out. Just when you call, that's for Mickey, because I can't imagine a jury saying <laughs> saying guilty to a client of Mickey. So I'm just being I'm just being honest. And um, and we also got to thank Williamson Cadillac uh, as well for selling Lamar and many many other Canes fans all of their cars. Uh, so if you need a new Cadillac, uh, go see them down at Williamson. Uh, ask for Jermaine Chambers; he's one of the finance managers. Uh, he won't do your deal, but he'll hook you up, I'm sure. You tell him you're a Canes fan and that Lamar Thomas sent you, he will hook you up with the right manager and the right sales guy to take the best care of you at Williamson Cadillac. Um, so, LT, big day on Saturday, at uh, yeah. Saturday night, under the lights at Hard Rock. We got Clemson coming to town. Canes got a win. I believe they're putting Coach Erickson and Coach Johnson in the ring of honor. Yes. Don't. Don't, I'm not going to ask you to explain why it's taken this long to put Coach Erickson and Coach Johnson in the ring of honor, but it's finally going to happen, so uh, that's a great thing, and I'm um, looking forward to seeing them on Saturday night as well. Actually, actually headed down to the Biltmore to, tomorrow to play a little golf with Coach Erickson. Oh, um, wow. So Yeah, so Gino, Sap, myself, a couple guys will be down there. Oh, I'm my, my God. I'm gonna take my one year old down there. He's gonna play some golf. Oh he my might play god! Than me. So yeah, it'll be wow. fun day. Fun day. Wow, man! Take a take a videographer, man. That that that'll be. Uh... Oh, there there will be a vid video. Yeah, yeah take some video. Yeah. Take some video and send it to me. We'll post it on Kane's. All right, all right, all right. Well, thank you everybody for uh, watching tonight, and hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back next Wednesday night with more. So for LT, I'm Gary, uh, and uh, we'll thank Bruce as well. We'll see you guys next week, everybody. Go Canes.